Hello there. How are you doing today? I hope you are feeling fabulous and loved and cared for by myself, even if by no one else. This video is going to be a very interesting esoteric topic, but I feel the implications thereof are extremely significant, and I hope this gives you inspiration and joy in understanding my psychology towards my fellow human beings, and you, and your significance and value to myself and to all the rest of us. Now, if we zoom back to ancient Greece, what's very fascinating about the ancient Greeks is they had an extremely detailed worldview and understanding of reality that was very, very deep. And this is why so many periods in history, such as the Renaissance and onwards from them, the Enlightenment, every new phase of history has a resurgence of appreciation for Greek philosophy, Greek ideas, Greek worldview, Greek political conceptions, and all sorts of these things, Greek views towards romance and sexuality, which is especially going to be the focus of this video, uh, and so many other things. Everything always keeps looping back to ancient Greece in so many ways, okay? And the reason for that is manifold. Within the stories of the Greeks, they had many very detailed symbolic archetypal concepts being talked about within their stories of the goddesses and gods, uh, underlying realities of the world, in their understanding of theater, drama, tragedy, the deep inner psyche of the human mind, psychology, um, and how that pertains to hormones and physiology as well. Of course, sculpture. They were way ahead of their time in terms of detail and detailed realism uh, before others were to anywhere near that notable degree. So <clears throat> there's a very interesting thing related to the male organ in, and its connection to all of these various other aspects. So I hypothesize and I would suggest that in ancient Greece, they had a very healthy dynamic romantically and sexually and this was a huge contributor to all of their success in all these other ways. So in ancient Greece, their view towards sexuality was very um, was very much oriented towards appreciation of the deeper significance of romance. And so they were very free and fluid with their sexuality in most cases, in terms of their specific romantic life. And <clears throat> the valuation of the intellect and the mind in a romantic way was especially emphasized. So what I'm about to talk about and say, I mean very seriously. I really do mean this. I'm not being sarcastic. I am not joking. Um, nothing of the sort. I really am genuinely from the bottom of my heart meaning what I'm saying. So in ancient Greece, they were known for appreciating specifically small penises, okay? And there was something specifically about the small penis that they associated with all of these other deeper intellectual pursuits and um, grasping of reality and all this other type of stuff. It was... It's very interesting that the psychology they had towards this male organ was very different from the modern psychology that is had towards this organ. And you'll notice how in the modern world of sexual dynamics, things are very, very unhealthy for most people most of the time and psychologically traumatic. Okay. And then you'll notice how this obsession and glorification of really large penises is... Um, a major factor in that, a major contributor to that dynamic, to men having major issues with mental health and feeling distraught and disturbed. But what if we had a society 
where the people in it, both men and women, genuinely, on a very deep level, specifically and in particular, <clears throat> valued and appreciated small penises. Specifically so. <clears throat> Think about how this would be extremely beneficial and healthy for huge numbers of people. And pertaining to those who have large penises, those among us humans who are considered large or well-endowed, being interacted with and actually valued also in a way that is a, is considered to be a an assistive sort of a proxy to men with smaller penises. What I'm referring to specifically is the oftentimes when Greeks portrayed large penises on things, they usually were doing it in a humorous sort of a Dionysian context. Basically they were sort of comparing those images and the men thus endowed with being connected to the animal kingdom. Okay. The other than human animal kingdom rather. And it wasn't necessarily specifically from a psychology of insult, actually. It was actually a psychology of having a healthy, joyful, uplifted, humorous appreciation thereof that was, in fact, actually positive, but it, would, it was looked at differently from the way modern humans view a large penis and what that actually indicates, okay? And if you look at this as a whole for what it actually is, I was looking at this and I was like, holy shit, this is why the Greeks had such a healthy dynamic with their sexuality and with the romance. And I conjecture that this is the main reason, the main reason why the Greeks had such a successful intellectual world and such a... Um, such a very refined creative drive and deep thinking drive is because they had this very soothing, relaxing, relieving environment towards romance and sexuality in their society that very much soothed their consciousness. Okay. <clears throat> so the, thus their view towards nudity, towards the human form and figure and all these other types of things. It was a much healthier psychology towards all these things than modern man even remotely comes close to. <clears throat> so, like I said in various other videos, I've always had a very interesting fetishized psychology where I've always idealized living in a world where men with small penises specifically are the ones exalted to high status and are glorified especially for that, genuinely so, by the people in the society and where I myself was treated as this sort of proxy, like kind of just animalistic individual to be, you know, used for the sexual pleasure of women by their husband's arrangement, et cetera. And then just basically left off to the side afterwards, basically just basically used for a specific function. And then the other man does everything else and basically um, is the one who actually romantically pleases her. So even in my personal life, I have a deep appreciation for this kind of a dynamic. And that's why I'm attracted to the male bull slash male stallion dynamic in fulfilling that role for couples. But I look back and I'm like, if we had a world where <clears throat> the sexuality was extremely healthy like this and men who were considered um, small, regarding their genitalia were specifically valued for it. And it was associated with this deep esoteric valuing of the full spectrum man, I guess you could say. Um, if that was actually the case, what a, what an amazing, very healthy dynamic that would be for everyone involved. Think about it for a minute because no one would feel insulted no one would feel degraded. No one would. In fact, everyone would be praised 
in very specific, unique ways. Everyone would feel special, valued, cared for, and appreciated romantically by everyone else in a very real way, in a very genuine way, right? There wouldn't be this dichotomy between, okay, large penis equals something worthy of praise, a man worthy of praise, small penis equals something to laugh at or scoff at. In fact, that wouldn't even be a factor whatsoever. <clears throat> if anything, it would be reversed, but even the laughing and the, it would be more of a positive, humorous um, engagement versus a, versus an insulting dynamic. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting Greek society was perfect in this regards. Of course, humans are humans. So, of course, there would have been people mistreating others, etc. Um, it wouldn't have been a utopia, but I think it would be overall much, much better as a social dynamic, etc. Because think about it. If we can actually achieve as a society regarding sexuality and views thereof, a, a complete 180 shift to like deeply appreciating the unique features of each individual person. Okay. And specifically valuing small penises genuinely as a thing that is actually desired and valuable and considered attractive, right? Then <clears throat> this kind of a society would be actually vastly healthier in terms of romance because the people in it would feel calmed they would feel the sense of well-being that they simply don't have access to in this world because the vast majority of men are suffering severely due to this penis size insecurity issue severely. And the men who are considered large, they're noticing that they're being heavily objectified for this, right? Disproportionately so. And they're looking at their fellow man and they're being like, it's not right the way my fellow man is being treated regarding this. This is this is cruel behavior that they're receiving. And I'm not okay with this, right? Because I do value my fellow man and I do appreciate specifically his assets and exactly how he is structured, etc. Okay? So what's interesting here is that <clears throat> the full spectrum man and the full spectrum woman is going to have the psychology that I have towards the situation where there's a genuine valuing of the other person's genitalia and body structure as is okay and it's it's a really genuinely meant really genuinely felt valuation not just said or spoken but really actually meant okay from the bottom of my heart and anyone else's heart who actually feels this way that i do and i'm noticing this if you're a very deep philosopher you're going to be a philosopher emotionally not only intellectually. And what this means is that you're, you're going to be a deep valuer of others really intensively. And your philosophy is going to reflect that deep valuation, right? So what's really cool about the Greeks is they basically, um, well, very specifically, amongst their philosophers and everyone else, they had this understanding of full spectrum valuation of a person as being what the the ideal man was about the the ideal valuation was about the full spectrum being that he was that the individual was right and the basically the emphasis on the small penis was very much connected to this it was connected to the fact that this man, this, in, this being, this individual, this philosopher, this person has extreme value, like genuine, real value. Okay. And where the sexual functions and the ability to regulate those sexual functions in a perpetual pleasurist way, whether they used that term specifically, um, they would have used historically a different term, of course, in their language, but they were they were referring to this perpetual pleasurist concept in their worldview. Um, the full spectrum man, basically, and the full spectrum woman also. <clears throat> it's where the um, the genitalia are actually an element that is cohesively connected to the rest of the full being of the person, right? 
and thus why the focus was on the full person directly as what was being idealized and why they didn't they didn't attach any kind of shaming or any sort of psychology like that towards a small penis whatsoever in fact it was associated with men who were deeply intellectual and deeply uh, thoughtful men who were very internal okay in their um consciousness right so i hope what i'm saying so far has made sense and is sinking in in terms of the, the significant implications thereof. So I'm not saying this at all jokingly, and I really want to reiterate that. And please, in the comments, please comment respectfully and with deep valuation and care for your fellow man in this discussion and in this topic thread, okay? Um, because I really do mean this. Like, uh, small penises are not something to be joked about. They are, in fact, something to be genuinely valued by everyone by both men and women. And I really do mean that. I, I'm not just saying this, okay? Uh, there is an esoteric significance to them. And I've picked up on this. I actually, I notice this now, and it's something I'm aware of very vividly. Um, and it's, it's amazing to me. There's an entire world of awareness connected to this that people aren't even beginning to tap into. There's a very, very significant... Uh, worlds of vivid awareness of deeper reality connected to this that is notably significant. Okay. Uh, so, and it's, it's like a completely untapped realm, you know? So nowadays what's interesting is the modern psychology is so warped that when even me saying this, people are just going to laugh and scoff. Oh, that's, you know, uh, pretty much all they're going to do is laugh and scoff at even the concept for the most part. And just consider it some off the wall, bizarre, ridiculous, stupid thing. But think about it. If you're a very deep philosopher, like you're going to be able to tap into what I'm getting at with this. Um, you're going to see something here. If you really go deep into this thinking process, you're going to notice something that you may have not noticed at all before. And it's going to open a bunch of different doors within your psychology to understand all sorts of other things about deeper reality, <clears throat> etc. Okay? So the psychology of romance and the psychology of pleasurism is a psychology of working as a team with others regarding each individual's unique assets, physiologically and otherwise. Okay? their intellectual assets, their mental assets, their emotional assets, their physiological capabilities, okay? And the valuation of the specific features that they have, in particular, amongst each individual. So it's a team effort, not an individual competition of, I'm over here competing with another man for pleasure, I'm over here competing with someone. No, it's a team effort, actually, where the romance and the pleasuring that's taking place is, is a mutual uplifting endeavor. Okay. Where each individual's assets are deeply appreciated by everyone else involved. So like if you have a team of people with different types of weaponry going in to perform a specific mission, right? In life, you could look at, a healthy romantic society and dynamic where each of the individuals is filling a specific, a very niche romantic role, and they are actually, uh, it's in symbiosis with everyone else's role therein, okay? Both men and women. So think how amazing, think how awesome this is. Think how soothing this will be to so many people's psychology. If we can actually form a society that is this way, starting with ourselves, where each individual person physiologically like feels a deep sense of valuation of themselves, their body, their genitalia, specifically the exact type of genitalia they have, whatever size that may be. And they like really, really deeply value themselves and receive deep valuation from others in that regards. Think how much depression this will relieve from the minds of people. It would be almost to miraculous degrees if this is actually engaged in intentionally and done. 
And this actually can be achieved, folks. We can actually purposefully create an environment, a social dynamic, and a romantic world dynamic amongst ourselves that is this in nature. Where our valuation of others is full spectrum and very, very specific to where we really deeply value them. To where small penises and testicles are specifically, in particular, deeply valued. On adult men, right? This can literally change everything. If enough people actually purposefully engage in this psychology, notable, very, very, very healthy social dynamics can happen from this. Very healthy ones, okay? And a lot of hearts can be soothed and relieved this way. A lot of benefit can come from this. So this is what I'm encouraging folks to do and how to start seeing others and interacting with them, especially your fellow man. Because this can literally lead to like actual tears of appreciation in the experience of men who have felt tormented and traumatized by this their whole lives to where they actually feel from you so much actual appreciation specifically for how they're structured in particular that it, it's completely, it will do a total 180 in their psychology. It can very, very much so help them, you know? <clears throat> and also this will help women too, because it will soothe and relieve women also from their body image insecurities as well to a notable degree. <clears throat> and pleasurism is the key. So <clears throat> really deeply think about this and contemplate this and don't, please do not allow scoffing or the modern psychology to flood your brain space in terms of, Oh, that'll never happen. It's not possible. It's just scoff, 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 scoff. People, the, the only reason the large penis obsession thing has spread and has become so prominent everywhere as a fixation is because it's being pushed as such. It's being socially accepted as such, and it's being hyped up and emphasized as such by everyone within the society together doing that as a whole, predominantly most people, most of the time, but that dynamic can be shifted. It doesn't have to remain that way. It can actually shift from that to the type of appreciation I'm talking about. Where appreciation for that will still remain, but it'll be of a different nature. Okay? A much more soothing, a much more um, uplifting nature. Because when you combine humor with appreciation, you have dopamine being hit on two levels, actually. And so... <clears throat> It's also beneficial and would be even actually more beneficial for also the largely endowed among us or those of us who are considered that as well. Very healthy for us too. Full spectrum well-being for everyone. Engaged. So <clears throat> this is the far more significant aspect to what we can achieve on a larger scale. And it starts with us individually, folks. It actually starts with us ourselves first and from us, it spreads. Okay. It starts with you, the person listening to this recording as I speak. Please get into a psychology of deeply valuing others and the particular uniqueness of their features. Obviously, the encouragement of health will always be there, encouraging others to be as healthy as possible, but still with appreciation of exactly how they are directly also, 
while encouraging the person to be healthy. Okay. And this topic I'm going to talk about much more in videos ahead, because I think there's so many layers to this that are really, really, really needing to be talked about and engaged in, because this is a, this is something that can actually be applied as an actual solution because what intelligent deep men do the example that good quality men set for others, others will follow. Women do follow suit to that. The main reason so many women are fixating on this large penis thing so much so is because it's a socially accepted emotional hype train. But if that was shifted, women would also follow suit as well with that psychology. What men, what the high quality men are valuing and stating is what, what is to be valued is what the women in the society would actually agree to and follow suit to. This is why I say it starts with the men who are already considered the alphas, etc. It starts with those of us who are already considered good-looking, tall, and well-endowed, and from us it spreads. And that can become the new social standard. That can become the new romantic and sexual standard. People genuinely being appreciated and the psychology in women of genuinely appreciating others and in men also as being what is encouraged as what is desirable in a person's psychology to where people actually aspire to value the specifics of others' physiologies and their uniqueness as what's encouraged in them psychologically. So think about this for a minute. <clears throat> Think about how many things this could actually change. There's a lot that could happen from this. Because if you can actually get people feeling appreciated for real, and actually being appreciated for real, that makes a difference, folks. People feeling like they are genuinely really important to other human beings around them, and significant to them, makes a massive difference in whether people feel depressed or not, whether people feel happy or not, and whether people feel cared for or not. Major difference. So I'll leave you with that tonight to contemplate deeply, and I encourage you to look very deep into the esoteric layers of Greek philosophy and Greek um, artistic and creative thinking and what they were trying to portray in these things, in their drama, in their art, in, in their theater, in how they structured their society, etc., why they encouraged uh, often orgiastic dynamics, <clears throat> things of this sort. Um, because they, they tapped into this. They figured out that this contributed to a healthy mind, that this contributed to a healthy intellectual capacity. To, uh, this contributed to a sense of emotional well-being and appreciation from others, right? And that was what the driving force was for deep thinking, deep creativity, was that permeating appreciation of others around you is what drove so much of this independent thinking, right? That's why their society emphasized individual city-state emphasis, where the emphasis was on each individual grouping of people really very much so being very independent from other groupings. And they encouraged this healthy tribalism, this healthy competition amongst different city-states, right? Uh, to be the best they could be, to be the best version of themselves, etc. And so it's a very beautiful thing. It's just, there's a whole world here, folks, that's, that really needs to be discussed on more channels and in more content. It's, it's a thing that's just... Um, it's a gold mine worth of topics. A gold mine is here. Um, and if you've listened to pay close attention, I'm sure you can see it. You can feel what I'm, I'm feeling here and getting at. And more than anything, I hope after this presentation, you feel deeply valued by myself more so than ever before. And you feel more confident in yourself and that your physiology is significant. 
whatever your physiology may be and is important and is valuable to myself and to those others who are very, very deep among us. And with that, I hope you an absolutely, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful night and I wish you lucid dreams of a romantic nature according to the exact type you desire and the specific forms they're in. If you want to talk with me directly about this topic or other similar topics, feel free to email me at gnosticantenatalist at gmail.com or send me an email if you want me to read it or talk about it, and I will be happy to do so. I'm always happy to talk with you and interact with you and encourage you in feeling more valued and knowing that you are important to me. This is a very important thing to me personally, and I take it very deep to my heart and very um, very much a thing of significance. <clears throat> and I hope and look forward to you valuing others as well like this and feeling valued by others around you on a much deeper level than you have before up to this point. <clears throat> And with that, I will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day.